Hello and welcome to the Montevallo Falcons pregame show. Tonight, the University of Montevallo women's basketball team will take it on the Stillman College Tigers here in Trustmark Arena. I'm Wyatt Hall alongside Alex Tejada. Montevallo is 1-1 one one on the season, had a win against Tuskegee and a loss against West Florida, both here on their home floor. How important is this game against tonight here against Stillman for them to get a win? Oh, well, tonight is a must-win game. There's a non-conference schedule, consists of three more games before they start a very tough Peach right. Belt Conference schedule against a team that they've beaten the last couple seasons, a team Gary Van Atta is perfect against. I would say tonight is a must-win game. It's a game at home, and it would be a perfect rebound from a heartbreaking loss against West Florida. And you got to think Coach Van Atta has the win uh, back when they played him in his t previous tenure here, 121 to 29 and then uh, the most recent meeting was the only win that season for the Falcons part of their eight wins in the last two seasons so we know they want to get off on the right foot here and get above 500. Who's the key player? Who's the most important player we need to look for tonight in this game? There's been several that have been uh, rising and falling for this team. Who, who do we look for tonight, Alex? Well, we've seen a lot of players, as you mentioned, have inconsistent games, have spurts of brilliance, but the main player that's the mainstay and is the common denominator in all Montevallo victories is Rayvon Christian. Right. She puts up a lot of points and she's massive getting rebounds against a team that averages more than 15 rebounds a game. They're going to have to get a lot of rebounds tonight from her as well as the 20 points that she's put in the last couple games. Another player that we could throw in there also is Morgan Smith. She only had 10 points in that last game, but how important is she to this team and in this game tonight? Well, playing against a Stillman team that has a low three-point shooting percentage, Montevallo can use that to their advantage. So far, they've had a low three-point shooting percentage, but that's because Morgan Smith is yet to get hot. If Morgan Smith or Ashley Dunstan can have a big game from beyond the arc, that could be the difference in Montevallo pulling away today. And we talked about two of the three players that are averaging uh, double-digit scoring for Montevallo this season. The third is Haven Albright, who's coming off that ACL injury last year. What does she bring to Coach Gary Venata's team this season? Well, Haven Albright brings really good ball handling, and when you have two, uh, two players on the other team, Arnisha Washington as well as Kiana Likely, who are good at getting steals, you're going to have to rely on Haven Albright as well as Demaya Foster and Jasmine Stubblefield to take care of the ball. This Montevallo team is averaging 18 turnovers per game, and that would be unacceptable tonight against Stillman. And that's a huge thing to watch the turnovers when we mentioned the uh, guards of Stillman averaging five steals a game, which the half-court defense of them can be huge. We know how Montevallo can rush uh, bringing the ball down the floor. Our featured Falcon for this game is Demaya Foster, the junior guard from Hueytown, who is averaging six and a half points per game. Coming off the bench, she's huge. Yeah, Demaya Foster provides a change of pace when the players on the field are getting a little fatigued or in foul trouble. Demaya Foster comes in, she's good shooting wise. She also provides a lot of speed, change of pace on the ball. Just distributing the ball, she's a very smart basketball player. She's been in this lineup for a while and it seems like Coach Van Atta is starting to get the best out of her. Jaleesia Lowry is averaging 18 and a half points per game for this Tigers team. What does Montevallo's game plan need to be to shut her down and get a victory here? Well, they have to be strong in the paint. They can't allow her to just run up on people. So I would say Rayvon Christian, Alba Perez, somebody's going to have to mark her at all times or possibly even double team because she is by far the main shooter. And you could even throw in Ashley Dunstan in that mix. We've yeah. seen her come off the bench as part, along with Demaya Foster, the six and seven rotation. She had three blocks in the West Florida game. She can be pivotal in the post as well. Jasmine Stubblefield and Alba Perez both got into some turnover and foul trouble in that West Florida game. And we'll talk about Alba Perez in a second. But if Stubblefield gets in some some trouble, who who can come in and kind of take over for her? Because she's really the sole point guard and floor general of this Montevallo team. Well, the only other options besides Stubblefield is Haven Albright as well as Demaya Foster. They're pretty much the only players that have a skill set that's anywhere comparable to Jasmine Stubblefield. So Haven Albright, of course, will be massive, and Demaya Foster, as we mentioned, off the bench, will be huge if Jasmine Stubblefield gets into foul trouble. And then here's where we get into the other thing, Alba Perez. We saw three straight times they passed the ball into the uh, to her in the post against West Florida, traveled three times in a row. Yeah. When she gets a lack of confidence that early in the game and you have to pull her out and she doesn't really play that much, you bring in Ashley Dunstan yeah. there to you know, replace her. But besides Dunstan and Foster, who else is there on this Montevallo bench that can come in and bring some spark to the team, especially Perez is, is troubling? 
Well, Coach Van Atta has talked about Ashley Tyus. She's a talented freshman he brought in. She's a good scorer. She's just yet to get going on the season. So look for Ashley Tyus to eventually have a breakout game today. All right. Well, this game should be a good one. Uh, a good matchup. Both teams looking to get a win over 500 here in this uh, matchup before Thanksgiving. So in just a few minutes, Austin Gates will be on the call with Alex Zahada. I'm Wyatt Hall. Hello and welcome to Trustmark Arena. I'm Austin Gates alongside Alex Zahada. We got a good win in store. Montevallo versus the Stillman Tigers. Should be a great matchup today. Alex, what do you see and what are you looking for in this game? Well, I'm looking to see if Montevallo can, which Montevallo team comes out today. The team that we saw in the first half that took a one-point lead at halftime against West Florida, or is it the team that came out in the second half and couldn't shoot in the third quarter? It all depends on what kind of lineups as well that Coach Van Atta goes to. He's only coached two games. We've seen some shift in lineups. Important to see who comes off the bench because Ashley Dunstan and Demaya Foster have had huge impacts off the bench, as well as let's see if anybody can help out Rayvon Christian with the scoring. Right, Rayvon Christian, a huge scorer. Montevallo coming into this one at 1-1 one one on the season after a win against Tuskegee and dropping one to West Florida last time out. Stillman Tigers come in at 2-3. and three. Rayvon Christian will go up for the tip and will win it, and Jasmine Stubblefield will take control. Morgan Smith on the wing. Side, and that one thrown away by Morgan Smith. And so the first turnover. It's interesting to see in the starting lineup, they've already made a change. Evans, Jasmine Evans, the junior, has been replaced by true freshman Jasmine, or pardon, Tabitha Robinson, as well as their leading scorer, Lowry, it's not on the court. And there's a great inside pass from Jada Pruitt to Kiana Likely. I think it's Victoria Douglas on that, on that play. Albright will shoot off the back iron. Cr rebound Christian. Swatted away by number five, Arnicia Washington. And Arnisha Washington is one of the massive players in this team. She scores double digits every game and shoots 76% from the free line. She also has 23 steals on the year. Christian trapped, finds Morgan Smith who pulls up, makes it. Her first three of the day goes in. And that's vital. Last year's returning leading score, Morgan Smith needs to be hot from beyond the arc and she's already one of one. The three, two Montevallo leads and a foul committed there, there by Avon Christian. And Kiana Likely, the junior from Selma, certainly asked the questions, and she will pick up fouls if she continues to drive. This time it was Victoria Douglas who did well driving. Be interesting to see how long it takes before 23, Jaleesha Lowry comes off. She's a freshman from Milwaukee, but leads the team with 18.5 points per game, but has only started two contests this year. First one and second one good from Douglas. Stubblefield brings it up quickly. They swing away. Albright on the side, all the way across to Stubblefield. Stubblefield all the way back to Albright, who pulls and makes it. The two threes from Montevallo give them a 6-4 to four lead over the Stillman Tigers. And early on, Dion, very catch-and-shoot type player, Haven Albright, liked the look she got from three. That one... Made by Kiana Likely. Coach Van Adam was unhappy with that. That was a stroll in the park for Likely. Yeah, missed defensive assignment there. Stubblefield swings. Perez in off the side and Christian rebounds and does not get it to go. Stubblefield comes up with it. Back out to Albright. Inside to Christian who goes up and puts that one in. And props for that play go to Christian. She had it stolen away and then stole it back and kicked it out and allowed for another possession. All brought up by Jada Pruitt. 
And there is Douglas again, misses. Perez with the rebound. Morgan Smith will bring it up. Stubblefield at the top of the key. Inside, pulls up from the paint, off the back iron. Rebounded by Washington. Back out to Washington. Pruitt. Washington around. Back to Washington who takes the three. Montevallo ball. And early on this game already being played at a frantic pace, back and forth type possessions. Right, less than four minutes gone, and it's 6.39 as we pause for a player to tie your shoe. Maybe because if it's a non-conference game, the fact that both teams aren't using all of the shot clock, they want to get at each other early on. Jasmine Stubblefield brings it up court. Thrown inside to Christian, and she loses it, and it's going to be a jump ball. And brought up by Jada Pruitt. Pruitt, top of the key. And that'll be a double dribble. 8-6, Montevallo leads. 6-10 left to go in the first quarter. Let's go. Stubblefield will bring it up court. Morgan Smith finds Albright, who throws it away. And Kayla Coleman has been brought in the game. She's a key player up, off of the bench for Stillman College. They're putting her on Rayvon Christian already. Christian proving difficult to defend for the Tigers. Illegal screen set by Washington. Albright will inbound it to Jasmine Stubblefield. Smith on the wing, inside, Perez gets it blocked. Throw it forward to Likely. Likely dribbles in. Good defense by Rayvon Christian. She passes back out, pulled and missed by Pruitt. And Morgan Smith has the rebound snatched away from her by Washington. That one put in by Tabitha Robinson. That was a massive steal by Washington to keep the play alive. She leads the team with 23, and she's averaging five rebounds a game. Albright looking inside to Christian, who finds Perez on the baseline, off back iron. And it's going to be Stillman ball, and that will be a media timeout. 4.57 left to go here in the first quarter. Montevallo tied with Stillman at eight. Alex, what are you seeing so far? Well, in the opening first half of the first quarter, both teams are going at each other really fast. Early on, three-point shooting was what was good for the Falcons. Stillman Tigers, on the other hand, want to drive the ball down low at the Falcons. We'll see if either team changes their game plan early on. I'm not sure if the Falcons wanted to shoot threes per se, but they were getting fantastic open looks early on. So let's see if more of getting the ball down low to Rayvon Christian. Also, Alba Perez has had another slow start to the game. She was frustrated last game. She got three travels. We'll see if her confidence takes a dent or if they can get the ball into her and get a quick, easy point to make her feeling a lot better. She's a very aggressive player, just has to deal with confidence problems recently. That's right, Montevallo only shooting 18% from beyond the arc on the season. The Falcons also need to get after Kiana Likely. She has 29 of her team's total turnovers this year, so ball handling has not been her greatest asset despite 
12.8 rebounds a game. So, three turnovers for Montevallo. And there's one put over the basket by number 23, Jaleesa Lowry. And Jaleesa Lowry has finally come back in the game. She leads the team in points. And there's Washington who goes up against Christian and loses. Turn it. Where are you, Emma? So who? And that's what we were talking about for Alba Perez. Needed a quick ease of basket to make her feel better. That one up and missed Perez with a rebound. Stubblefield brings it forward. And Washington will bring it now. Albright with the rebound, well, loses it. Likely puts it up, misses Washington with the rebound and put back. It was an ill-advised pass that led to the turnover, but great second chance points for Stillman. And Ashley Dunstan now gets it poked away. So number three now brings it forward, Kiana Likely. Likely in. That one pulled by Washington. Stubblefield forward, too far for Albright, but Perez picks it up behind her and puts it in. Montevallo takes the lead, 12-10. That was great hustle, and it sums up the play of Haven Albright. The hustle kept it alive, and easy points there for the Falcons. Good vision there from Stubblefield to put the play into motion. Now the ball, Robinson inside, blocked. Kayla Coleman, Albright. Inside to Perez. Outside to Dunson, who puts up the three, off. And that one will be knocked out of bounds by Stillman. Demaya Foster will check in for Jasmine Stubblefield. And Victoria Douglas will check back in for number 13, Tabitha Robinson. Mm -hmm. Dunstan gets it, drives in, back out to Foster, who drops it into Perez, back out to Dunstan for three, off. Washington with the rebound. Passes it forward, Foster with a great play, knocks it out of bounds. And that's what we mentioned before the game about the change of pace, Demaya Foster, real aggressive player. Her hustle almost created a turnover there. Washington loses it, but regains control. Foster knocks it away again, but then it hits off of a Stillman player, so Montevallo will gain possession. Montevallo leads 12-10, 2.15 left to go here in the first quarter. Foster looking, waiting for the offense to set up. Dunstan on the wing, and Haven Albright throws it away. Likely. Inside to Douglas. Likely back out. That one missed. Dunstan. All right, back around to Foster. Who finds Albright again. Dunstan top of the key. Throws it away. Unfortunate couple possessions for the Falcons. We saw two three-pointers missed by Ashley Dunstan. She was really good at those last year. That was her game. Ill-advised pass by Washington uh, on the other end, so sloppy from both teams in the last couple possessions. it has been a lot of those throwaways uh, here early for the Falcons. Uh, a lot of it looks like kind of they're on their heels. They're asleep out there. Minute 30 left to go in the first quarter. Stillman with the ball. Coleman. And she travels. And it will be encouraging for the Falcons 
that Lowry has yet to score in the game. She's been the main scorer this year. Was fantastic in the win against Virginia Lynchburg. Perez goes up, misses it, and it's possession is gained by Lowry, who goes up and is fouled by Demaya Foster. Excellent hustle by Lowry asking the questions, and she might get her first points here. If you're in a way side and you come to Trustmark Arena, which is a hard place to play, you want your star player to get off the mark early on. Lowry makes the first. One-point lead now for the Falcons. And Lowry only a 57% free throw shooter on the year. That one missed as well. Perez with the rebound. Gives it off to Smith. Maya Foster goes in and is blocked by Douglas. Lowry will lose it and lose possession of it as well as it will go out of bounds. And more sloppy play. Demaya Foster, good idea. The execution wasn't right. And then on the other side of the court, Lowry's foot on the baseline. Turns it over for Stillman. Tyus on the wing. Gets her first touch. She'll dribble and find Foster. Back to Dunstan. Foster drives in. Floater off the back iron. Tyus with the rebound after Smith knocks it away. Tyus misses as well. Douglas with the rebound. Coach has highlighted Tyus as a potential scorer. She's yet to get running, though, this season. As Rayvon Christian gets set to check it back in. As poor defense there allows is that, uh, Lowry. Lowry to get back to the line. Now it's just complimenting the Falcons for keeping Lowry quiet, and now she's starting to make her mark in the game. Just driving at the basket and has picked up fouls in the last two possessions. Three subs here as the, there's .7 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Smith with the rebound, chunks it, and it is not gonna be close. So the Falcons go into the second quarter down by a point, 13-12. Alex, what did you see in the second part, half of the first quarter? Well, the Falcons, we talked about it, opened up pretty solid with the three-pointers. Kind of rested on their laurels eventually, allowed Stillman into the game. The, the defense wasn't as in your face as I would have expected against a Stillman team. They're not a very good shooting team. They're two and three entering this game. I was expecting more in-your-face defense. We'll see if Coach Van Attic gets at them. Too many turnovers from both teams. The end of the first quarter was just a calamity of errors from both teams, just turning the ball over back and forth. This game is crying out for somebody to step up, and Rayvon Christian didn't see too many minutes. After a break, she'll be in the game, and hopefully they can get the ball down to her on the post. Right, you would think that she would be a huge player for Montevallo. Yeah, and Alba uh, Perez also got an easy basket there. We'll see if she can build on that. Four rebounds for Perez. Or four points for Perez. And three rebounds, three rebounds to go with that. Likely and Washington both have four rebounds for Stillman as well. we are dead even on rebounds. Montevallo has turned the ball over seven times in that first quarter. That's the only stat you need to look at, really. Montevallo has been averaging 18.5 turnovers a game. It's really been their Achilles heel so far in this young season. Tonight already with seven. If they were keeping up at this rate, it would be 28 on the game. And unacceptable when you're playing a team like Stillman, who will punish you if you give up too many free possessions. Stubblefield will get the inbound pass and give it off to Tyus. Swings it out to Albright. Tyus drives in. An inside pass from Morgan Smith. Albright for three. Got it. Montevallo regains the lead, 15-13. And the three-point touch of Haven. Albright looks to have returned. That's massive for Coach Van Atta's side.
Douglas drives in on Christian. Christian lets her go. The tie game again. Stubblefield to Tyus. Tyus swings it around. Smith to Albright. Back to Tyus who pulls for three and short. Great job by Morgan Smith to get the rebound and throw it back out to Haven Albright. And that's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow towards Stillman. And coach has highlighted Ashley Tyus as a breakout scorer once she gets into her rhythm. She's yet to so far this season, and you kind of saw a moment's hesitation before she took that shot, and it was an air ball. So her confidence definitely being a problem. You think knock down one or two threes, and she would be on a roll. It's time better defense from Christian. Tyus really made the difference there. She helped on a double team and almost stripped the ball away. She gets it stripped herself, but regains possession. Stubblefield. And that's going to be a travel on Jasmine Stubblefield. Took an extra step. 15-15, 8.32 left to go in the first, second quarter. Well, so far, Stillman has not been very good against Alabama teams. They have lost all three of their games to fellow Alabama opponents, Faulkner, Concordia, and Talladega. And here comes Albright across to Tyus. Tyus will pull back out. Albright pulls for three, off. Smith with the rebound, and they're going to call her for over the back. And that was a little harsh. It looked like Morgan Smith was in a decent position to begin with. Yeah, it looks like both players got to the ball, going for the ball. It's likely will inbound to Washington. Montevallo need to be tougher down low. This team only shoots less than 20% three points, and their main shooters, Robinson and Washington. And we haven't seen much of Robinson so far today. Inside, stolen by Stubblefield. He will get it poked away. Still going to be Montevallo ball. Jasmine Stubblefield, the senior leader on this team, coach getting after her to not turn the ball over. We've seen some sloppy ball handling early on. Tyus had it open for a second and then dribbled into the corner. Stubblefield inside to Christian, who could not handle it to start off. But he puts it up through two defenders, 17-15. When all else fails, do with, go with what you know, and that's feeding the ball down low to Rayvon Christian. Had 20 points last game. Yeah. But Washington brings it up to the corner, gives it off to Likely. Likely will find Washington in the corner, wide open for three, in and out. Rebounded and missed by Tabitha Robinson. Robinson's had a difficult game shooting. She leads the team in three points. She's the best with shooting 25% from beyond the arc. Hasn't gotten open looks. Brittany Wood will check in for Ashley Tyus. Hasn't seen a whole lot of playing time. I believe eight minutes all season. Yeah, Brittany Wood has been a player Coach Van Atta likes to bring off the bench. Provides a different element to the team so far. She's yet to make a big impact. We'll see what happens right here. No, no points in the Falcon uniform yet for her. Morgan Smith goes up through contact and makes the bucket. 19-15, Montevallo leads. Without Ashley Dunstan in the game, Morgan Smith is your only other height option besides Rayvon Christian. Douglas, top of the key to Likely. There's Washington, pulls up, does not get it. Knocked away by Smith and Stubblefield. And then an easy layup to Albright on the fast break. Great pass, and Haven Albright caught it in her stride and an easy layup. Montevallo's starting to carve out a lead now. 21-15, the Montevallo lead, as Washington brings it up past midcourt. Likely goes up, loses it, regains it, stripped by Smith. And there's a travel. This is what I talked about, about in-your-face type defending, forcing turnovers, Montevallo double-teaming players, trapping, and 
forcing yeah. turnovers. We didn't really see that in the first quarter, and it's really stepped up here in the second quarter, and the Falcons are reaping the benefits. Albright cross to Brittany Wood, drives in, puts up the layup, and cannot get it to go. But she knocks it away and gives it to Smith, who knocks it down. 23-15. Well, those first points in a Falcon uniform will have to wait for Brittany Wood, but good awareness by Morgan Smith knocking down the jumper. Forces a timeout as the Falcons have an eight-point lead. Yeah, a huge play here in the second corner by Montevallo. Doing very well. So, Alex, Alex, what are you look going forward? What do the Falcons need to continue to do to build on this lead? They're on an 11-2 run, and a lot of that has been the fact that Stillman have had too many empty possessions this quarter, and Montevallo's defense has been really good. We mentioned Ashley Tyus forced to turn over a couple plays ago. Rayvon Christian, Morgan Smith have all been real tight to their players. Early in the first quarter, they were allowing too many easy scoring lanes to players like Lowry and Washington. Now they're forcing some three-point shots, and against a team that isn't very good from beyond the arc, it's resulting in empty turnovers. And the Falcons are doing good transition offense by default. Get the ball as often to Haven Albright, Morgan Smith, because they seem to be the hot hands today. 23-15, Montevallo leads with 5.52 left to go in this game, or well, in the first half. And we've already seen five lead changes today, so it'll be a back and forth contest. Eight points now from Haven Albright, leads all scores. Seven from Morgan Smith. Morgan Smith also has six rebounds. She's on the double-double watch. Morgan Smith is the only player last game to have a double-double. Falcons have still committed more turnovers, though, nine to Stillman, seven. Washington, double team, gets it away. Likely puts one up and in. Last couple possessions, we've seen Montevallo step up their defense. That time, Stillman responded in turn and used their passing to get out of the trap. Stubblefield all the way across to Wood, who loses the ball, but Stubblefield grabs it. Wood for three, does not get it. 23-17. Stubblefield has to be the calming influence for these Falcons. He's a real senior leader, has a lot of experience. Great job by Stubblefield catching the person that wasn't covered right there. And Albright makes a great play. Stubblefield brings it up. Through to dangerous pass, and it is caught by a Stillman player as she falls down. What I mentioned about being a calming influence, that time it was not the best pass from Jasmine Stubblefield. Perhaps should have waited for more players to advance up the court, but good play by Haven Albright on both ends of the court, getting a steal to go along with her eight points. And there's one made for number 13, Tabitha Robinson. Tabitha Robinson is the three-point threat on this team, pretty much the only one they have besides Washington. Have to get in her face when she's open. Christian inside, puts it up off the backboard, too strong. Likely brings it up. Wood with the rebound, and she will push it up the court to Albright. Albright goes up, gets the foul, almost and one. So Albright will go to the line, shoot two. They get Douglas on the foul. And right now the Falcons are going at Victoria Douglas. I'm not sure if it's a matchup thing, but everybody going forward is asking the question of Victoria Douglas. This time she's forced to commit a foul. The last two possessions she's been skipped around. Albright makes the first from the line. Dunstan and Perez check in for Wood and Christian. Two players that are have good skill sets but have yet to make an impact so far in this game. Really coming off the bench now, coach can tell them it's like the start of a new game. You don't have to remember your missed shots early on and can build from here. Alba Perez also has two points on the game. Ashley Dunstan needs to get an open look for three. All right, made the, both free throws, 25-20, Falcon lead at five. 
And there was Robinson again for two, 25-22. Montevallo lead down to three. Morgan Smith wide open from way beyond the arc. Makes it 28-25-22. Wow, Morgan Smith. From distance. Speak, spoke that she was the hot hand as well as Haven Albright. Morgan Smith lighting it up. Albright, not afraid to get on the floor for that one. And there's another shot made by Tabitha Robinson. Tabitha Robinson, Tabitha Robinson has a lovely stroke, and that time she put it down. It looks like it has a chance every time it comes off her hands. Perez puts it up and in. That's better from Alba Perez. The turn that she's been moving too far forward and already moving towards the basket, that time she did good, made a dribble before taking a step been called for the travel too much. I'm sure Coach Van Ad has worked with that with her in practice. Washington steps cross court to Lowry. Who finds Robinson again. Who gives it back to Lowry. Who goes in. Travel. Yeah, that was one of the more obvious travel calls. So far compared to his animated antics on the sideline, Coach is pretty calm right now. Six-point lead probably has a lot to do with that. 30-24, six-point lead Montevallo. Stubblefield will bring it up. 2.15 left to go in the first half. One more. Smith will drive in, back out to Albright. Off, rebounded by Robinson. Now hands it off to Pruitt, who is back in the game. It's important for the Falcons to keep this lead going into halftime. Lazy pass, Dunstan steals it. And then overthrows Albright. And it looked like a quick transition point there, too much on it from Ashley Dunstan. Was thinking Haven Albright was as tall as she was. Smith will check out for Christian. Likely. <laughs> Offensive foul by Coleman. And in the first minutes, it looked like this was going to be a high-scoring contest. It's just tapered off recently. It's become more of a defensive struggle. Really, it's been turnover for turnover at some points in the game. Last couple threes from Haven Albright have been missed. And without Morgan Smith on the court, you would think the ball down low to Perez or Rayvon Christian would be the preferred option. Stolen by Likely. We'll have only Albright, and Albright gives the foul and one. So likely we'll go to the line. She makes that one from the line. If you foul there, do you try to foul her a little bit harder so she doesn't make the shot? I would. I mean, <laughs> at that point, you're pretty much beat. You either let her go there, you foul hard so she doesn't get the point. That was almost, she almost felt obliged to force that foul because that's just what you do when you're in that position. It needed to be a lot stronger if she was going to foul. Or if not, you don't say let them score, but you kind of ease up a little bit there. A Montevallo ball. And lead has been cut down to three, as I mentioned. Massive for them to go into halftime with the lead. Find Subblefield who pulls up for two off. Rebounded by Douglas. Smith will get set to check back in. Yeah, it's very worrying for the Falcons the way the scoring has dried up since Morgan Smith has been off the court. Pruitt finds Washington who pulls up, misses. Morgan Smith will check in for Ashley Dunstan. Smith. 
Christian steals the inbound pass and then throws it away, but Albright makes a great play to poke it ahead to Smith. And Alba Perez puts it up and in, 32-27. Great strength by Alba Perez and good no-call by the referee. It could have been an offensive foul. Not very smart passing on the way down there by the no, Falcons. Even Albright Abbott. had to force it forward to kind of act as an intermediary because the pass was not going to make it. 12 seconds left, no shot clock. Douglas goes in, runs into her own player and travels. And that is a terrible play for Stillman. They will hate to, they've shot themselves in the foot too many times this game and with 8.2, they would have liked to have gotten off the final shot there with the clock turned off. But just mental errors are starting to creep back into their game. They started a comeback after being down eight and got it as close as one for a second. But Falcons have pulled it back out to five. All right, the Montevallo timeout there with 8.2 left. Montevallo will get the final shot of the half to try to push the lead to that's the leads at five. They're trying to push the lead either six or seven. Yeah, that would be preferred. But it's been a decent yeah. half so far. You have to like what you've seen if you're Coach Van Atta. You can build off of this, especially right. when you haven't seen one or two players haven't really stood out. It's really been a collective effort and they're still in the game and have a, have a lead, so you would only like your chances in the second half if you can get a little bit of improvement. Off, rebounded by Stillman. So no shot. Montevallo will go into the locker room with a five-point lead, 32-27. Alex, what did you see in the first half? Well, Montevallo got off to a frantic start, and so did Stillman, and it was a lot of three-pointers early on. Haven Albright got three-pointers early on and then later in the game had a quiet eight points but I like how Alba Perez got involved in the game they gave it to her down low provided a different option than Rayvon Christian when the Falcons were pressing hard defensively Demaya Foster as well as Jasmine Stubblefield helped get a couple steals the quick transition offense is important for Montevallo because it allowed Morgan Smith to get so many points Right, Montevallo doing very well in the first half. Stepped up the defense in the second quarter, which allowed them to build on their lead. So we'll take a quick break here. We'll be right back with a halftime show, and we'll see you in just a minute. focus on the stories you need to know. Once a week, tune in online or on the go for the news that impacts your life and matters to you. Falcon Weekly is your one-stop shop for information. And stay in touch with us 24-7 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Falcon Weekly, find your news here. College of Fine Arts. 
How did we become painted with just one brush? Time's forever moving forward, we can't rush. Now tell me why somebody even wanna choose a college. I know you don't wanna leave with just book knowledge. We don't sell an institution, but an attitude. Other schools don't understand, they on a different latitude. You don't wanna get caught up in that sea of sameness when we perfectly unique. Yeah, we looking blameless. So get about your seats, get louder, louder. We chose Montevallo when we couldn't be prouder. We get it. You're busy. That's why Falcon Weekly focuses on the news you need to know. So tune in for the stories that impact your life and matter to you. And make Falcon Weekly your source for news on the go. And be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Falcon Weekly. Find your news here. College of Fine Arts. How did we become painted with just one brush? Time's forever moving forward, we can't rush. Now tell me why somebody even wanna choose a college. I know you don't wanna leave with just book knowledge. We don't sell an institution, but an attitude. Other schools don't understand, they on a different latitude. You don't wanna get caught up in that sea of sameness when we perfectly unique, yeah, we looking blameless. So get about your seats, get louder, louder. We chose Montevallo when we couldn't be prouder.
that's why here at Falcon Weekly, we want to focus on the stories you need to know. Once a week, tune in online or on the go for the news that impacts your life and matters to you. Falcon Weekly is your one-stop shop for information. And stay in touch with us 24-7 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Falcon Weekly, find your news here. College of Fine Arts. How did we become painted with just one brush? Time's forever moving forward. We can't rush. Now tell me why somebody even want to choose a college. I know you don't want to leave with just book knowledge. We don't sell an institution but an attitude. Other students I guess no, no, nobody's got one. <laughs> What happened they cut from that? Have they cut from that shot or is that what everybody sees? It's probably what everybody sees. <laughs> Why don't they just cut it? Like cut, cut to something else, like. <laughs>
Kind of just worked out there for Morgan Smith. Got an easy rebound. And Albright will foul Robinson and she will get the and one. First foul number 20, Haven Albright. First Robinson first was the leading scorer for the Tigers in the first half. She really is the main three point threat, and the aggressive defense by the Falcons forced them to shoot from the line. That one missed. Re Rayvon Christian with the rebound. Stoville brings it forward. Albright swings it around to Stubblefield. Back to Smith. And the inside pass is a jump ball and will be Stillman ball. And that's very unfortunate. So far, the Falcons look kind of static coming out of the locker and they need a play to wake them up. Douglas will drive, spin, and put one up and miss. Probably and didn't kick the ball out to Robinson. It was an open look for your best three-point shooter. Stubblefield will bring it forward. Smith drives baseline and loses the ball, but Perez gets it and puts it in. Her 10th point of the day. And that's the hustle from Alba Perez underneath the basket. And she's feeling a lot more confident today. Doesn't have any travels or turnovers. And she steals that one. Two on one break. And she will go up herself and get fouled. Real determined look on the face of Alba Perez. Junior from Niagara County Community College by way of Puerto Rico. It's added a little bit of hustle. I mentioned that they looked a little static from halftime. Alba Perez has provided the spark early on. She makes that one 37-32. Uh, 
Alvarez for the second. Makes it. 38-32, six point lead for the Falcons. Lowry will take it. Smith guarding Likely. And there's a travel from Lowry. Lowry hasn't had the best of games, the leading score for the Tigers, and that will not help either. Just a silly turnover. We saw way too many of those. In the first half, the Falcons had 13 to Stillman's 12. Way above average. Silverville puts one up, and it is off the mark. Lowry brings it up. Likely on the wing. Isolated with Smith. Passes it inside. That one missed by Lowry. And she goes up and down. Jump ball. Montevallo ball. Seen two early jump balls in this second half. And a concerned look on the face of Michelle Wells. Albright gives it to Smith, who drives in and back out to Stubblefield, who drives in as well and throws it away. Poked away by Perez, Stubblefield regains possession, puts it up and does not get that one. There's gonna be a foul on Perez that time. And more of the same from Jasmine Stubblefield, unfortunately gave up a turnover, but she made up for it in the first half with her rebounding, got a second chance point, just couldn't convert. Maya Foster will check in for Stubblefield. Both of them had a rough first half as far as ball handling. We spotlighted that as a main aspect of the game. Haven Albright has looked solid, however. We'll see if Demaya Foster can provide a bit of change of pace and a little bit more complacency. And Rayvon Christian will get the blocking foul. Douglas will go to the line. Yeah, Albright and Dunstan led the team in turnovers in the first half with three apiece. Douglas at the line is a 76% free throw shooter. So between Douglas, Robinson, and Pruitt, one of those three players you don't want to see at the strike. Albright loses that one. Foster bringing it up. And the bench has been warned for Stillman. <laughs> Interesting, it must have been something said. Backcourt violation. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that will have Coach very frustrated. Simple inbound play. Expect to have something ran and instead a backcourt violation. Not really Jemiah Foster's fault right there, though. She will get charged yeah. with the turnover. Yeah. Uh, a poor pass by Morgan Smith caused her to go that way. And Smith will grab the rebound. will push it forward. Smith goes up and tries to do it all herself. It cannot. Douglas with the rebound. Yeah, Lowry trying to do it all herself on one end of the court. Morgan Smith trying to force it on the other. They just need to pick their head up and look for the open teammates. Because as the play develops, someone is getting open every time. Lowry drives in. Albright with the foul. Albright has to watch the fouls. I believe that's her third. It is her third personal. Haven Albright has been your best ball handler so far despite the turnovers. Her power of recovery is huge. She's gotten on the ground and kept the ball alive on a couple occasions, made up for some mistakes. Albright and Smith will check out, and Dunstan and Stubblefield will check in. Lowry misses that one. Rebounded by Perez, who brings it up. 
gives it off to Stubblefield, who finds Dunstan inside with a nice layup, 40-34. Great vision by Stubblefield that time. Saw the back cut by Ashley Dunstan, and Dunstan, more of a three-point shooter, gambled on the play and got her reward. Stubblefield picked her out well. That's Stubblefield's sixth assist on the day. Likely is it back. Lowry, back to Robinson. Likely goes in and all three rebound by Perez. Foster pushes it forward just faster than everybody else. Goes up and misses the layup though. It's gonna be out on Ashley Dunstan. Yeah. Media timeout, 4.56. And the Falcons still lead by six points, but it has been a sloppy start for both teams again to this half. Mentioned too many Falcons trying to do too much. Morgan Smith tried to force it. It was better when Stubblefield picked out Dunstan on the pass. We've also seen Alba Perez get down low as well for an easy basket. Falcons did well to change from early on. They had two three, two three point misses, kind of went away from that. Went more to trying to get in the lane, to points in the paint. Six point lead for the Falcons. Four minutes, 56 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Moderate crowd here, considering there's not many students left on campus uh, yeah. for the Thanksgiving holidays as Montevallo ended classes today. We'll restart classes Monday. Yeah, I was going to mention that. You almost wish the teachers would have added another <laughs> day of class just to bring some of a crowd out here. It's been a very slim crowd compared to normal. Trustmark Arena, usually a hot spot for basketball action, usually packed out to the Raptors, but today, not too many people. Everybody already thinking about that Thanksgiving meal on Thursday. I know I'm already thinking about it. I <laughs> yeah. love Thanksgiving. <laughs> so Washington will bring it up court and hand it off to Douglas, who drives in. Does not get it. Perez grabs her 6th rebound. Stubblefield pushing forward. Dunstan will swing it to Foster. He swings it back to Stubblefield. Inside to Christian. And she will be fouled from behind by Coleman. So Christian will go to the line. And that's more of what we were talking about. Falcons only got Haven Albright to the line in the first half. Stillman did well to not foul. Now that the Falcons are kind of getting down low, trying to get some more points in the paint, it's forcing Stillman to foul. Realizing that Montevallo has the threat in Rayvon Christian, and now she's starting to get to the line. Both teams shooting pretty evenly right now. 38% from the Falcons, 35 from the Tigers. Rayvon Christian knocks both of those down. Falcons are perfect from the free throw line, six of six. Yeah, something we haven't seen too often from Montevallo, not the greatest free throw percentage last year. Robinson versus Dunstan. Give off to Lowry. Stubblefield will go in. Dunstan gets a hand up in the face. Perez with the rebound. Stubblefield. Ashley Dunstan off the rim. Rebound to Maya Foster. Is it back to Stubblefield who will back up and reset the offense. That one stolen by Washington. Stubblefield and Foster down there and it is fouled and the bucket and one. Well, it was an ill-advised shot from Dunstan. That was a long three and then Stubblefield was already looking up the court for the pass, kind of had it too far away from her body, allowed for the easy steal from Ernisha Washington. That one missed. Rebound by Likely. 42-38, Montevallo leads. And that's disheartening for the coach. You don't want to see a missed free throw converted into points. Yeah. 
And foul on the floor. She will shoot two. Both teams in the bonus now. Yep. Going to the quarter system, you go to the immediate double bonus. So. And Dunstan misses the first one. The first Montevallo free throw that does not go in today. Misses the second as well. Rebound by Likely. I believe Ashley Dunstan took a, a hop there. That was an odd free throw. Still couldn't get it. Perez guarding Likely. And there's Washington. Rebound by Christian. And that's not a bad play. Stillman were searching for a route back into the game. And the way Montevallo has been struggling the last couple minutes, they smelled the chance to get back in it. Under hurt. three to play here in the third quarter. Foster swings it around. Nice move by Foster who goes up and gets the easy layup. That's what Foster provides in the game, a change of pace, good ball handling skills, and pretty much asked the Stillman defense to cover her. And when there was no one, got the easy points. If you can't pass the ball to Rayvon Christian without it getting intercepted or turned over, you have to go yourself. And Demaya Foster took the game on her shoulders, got a quick basket, and ended that scoring drought for the Falcons. Doublefield comes out, looks like she got poked in the eye or something. And there is another three by Robinson. Robinson is your three-point threat. She was the leading scorer in the first half and is picking up where she left off. Albright swings it to Dunstan, who gives it to Foster. Albright inside to Perez, and that's going to be a travel. And that's what we saw three times at the very beginning of the West Florida game. Too many travels from Alba Perez. That's her first, and the game is a one-possession game with 2.09 in the third quarter. This is massive. Whoever gets the next lead could possibly pull away as the game starts to dwindle down. Turnovers have started to dry up as well. Just both teams trying to force a little bit too much, it seems. The timeout by Stillman that will become a media timeout. 44-41, two minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, that beautiful crossover by Demaya Foster. And then that inside play to Ashley Dunstan. Alex, what are you seeing so far here in the third quarter? What, did Mon what does Montevallo need to improve on? Well, they've done a good job about getting the ball down low to players. We need to see more passing when there's a lot of time on the shot clock. Again, they're not using all of it. They need to distribute the ball around, kind of stretch Stillman out. So far, the approach has been too direct. Pretty much get the ball down low or dribble too much. It's led to the steals and the turnovers. Stillman has also thrown into the game rebounding. We saw them miss a free throw and get points. But as free throws become a massive part of the game, the Falcons have been shooting really well until those two misses by Ashley Dunstan. So look to see if the Falcons can get to the line. I would like for them to continue to penetrate down low and try to get those hard points in the paint. As well as cover Robinson. She seems to be the only person that can knock down a three. She's 25% on the year. Shooting 100% tonight. Yeah, two two. exactly. 14 points for Robinson to lead all scorers. 12 from Perez and Morgan Smith. And astoundingly, she's six of seven from the field, two of two from three-pointer, but missed the one free throw. Smith is Lowry. That's a travel by Lowry. And the Falcons have three players in double digits. Perez, Smith, and Albright sharing the scoring despite Albright not scoring here in the second half. Morgan Smith is two rebounds away from a double-double. Alba Perez is three. Foster inside to Christian. Puts it up and in. 46, and she will go to the line. It's more of what Montevallo does best. Get the ball down low to Rayvon Christian and either get the points or go to the line. This time they get both. 
The points off of turnovers, Stillman is beating the Falcons there, 14 to eight. Well, the turnover's pretty even though, 16 to 15. Well, the turnovers have dried up. We saw 12 and 13, so only two and three committed by both teams. Foster steals it, wide open layup, puts it in. 49-41, that's what Demaya Foster can add. Yeah, Demaya Foster is a real spark plug coming off the bench, and Jasmine Stubblefield not having the best of games. Foster's come off the bench and teamed up with Haven Albright. And she knocks it down, that's Robinson. It doesn't matter where it's from on the field, she's now seven of eight. Foster Albright for three, off the back iron, rebounded by Lowry. That's an ill-advised shot. Haven Albright is not the hot hand and needs to pass that ball up kind of stretch out the Tiger defense. Albright almost comes up with a steal there. They give it back to Robinson, who knocks it down again. Nobody gets a hand in her face, and she will continue to knock them down. Eight of nine now from the field. Foster, dribble in. Christian goes in, draws contact, but no foul given. It was a good head fake. She didn't complete the move, though. She needed to drive further. Was looking for the foul, not getting. 20 seconds left to go in the quarter. That one, air ball. Thrown forward. Albright will chase it down. Put up the layup and in as time. It will expire. 51-45, Montevallo leads. Great play there at the end. You heard Alba Perez yelling at her team to stay organized defensively. They did just that. It was an air ball and the quick transition. Already proactive thinking got it down on the end of the court. And Haven Albright getting the points that she is good at, the easy layup in transition. Got it off just in time, had good awareness of where she was on the court. Six point lead in the third quarter. You really liking your odds with your coach fan at it. Right, uh, this team has played exceptionally well, uh, above expectations this season. Uh, they're picked to finish 14th in the Peach Book Conference. Haven't started Peach Book Conference play, yeah. but uh, this team looks to be uh, a lot better than that. Uh, we'll see that when we get into Peach Book play. But Montevallo had had pretty tough out of conference schedule, bringing in West Georgia or West Florida, actually uh, <laughs> here, not West Georgia. But they, uh, yeah, so bringing in a team like that, the quality that they are, and hanging with them for most of the night until the end, until they pulled away. Uh, this Montevallo team looks to be uh, above where they were last year at this point, definitely. So, yeah. Looking for exciting things to come from Coach Van Atta and this Falcons team. Yeah, solid non-conference schedule. That win against Tuskegee was not the easiest game either. West Florida is a future conference, Gulf South Conference opposition. So despite being one of the better teams in that conference, it's important for them to host the game at Trustmark Arena. Tonight against Stillman and Lemoyne Owen in the two games Coach Van Ad has probably circled as definite victories. You have to like your odds there. Before the trip to Miles College, which is the only non-conference away game, and then future, more future conference opponents, Auburn Montgomery, before it, it all opens on the 17th against Lander. Washington. Mm -hmm. Robinson. Gives it back to Pruitt. And there's going to be a blocking foul on Demaya Foster. She has the right to move with her. Now she can't take her space. That was a legal guarding position. Oh, no, she initiated contact. Come on. She has the right to move with her. You know that. She has the right to move with her. Inside, Smith gets a hand on it, but likely comes up with it and puts it in, 51-47. Fiona Likely is now in double digits. She had a slow start to the game, growing into it. She will have a major impact if Stillman are to get back in it. There's a blocking foul on Washington. That's going to be her fourth foul. Yeah, Anicia Washington must be a very difficult player to deal with if you're the coach. She has nine points, four rebounds. It's 413 from the field and one of five from three point percentage. When she does something right, it's it's remarkable, but so far too many errors and picks up her fourth personal foul. 
Stubblefield will bring it past half court. Dribble through two defenders. And they're going to call a travel on Jasmine Stubblefield. And if anything, that was more of a carry than a travel, but difficult call to make if you're the officials. But Jasmine Stubblefield again turning it over. Douglas does not get it. Likely puts it up and in. More second chance points for Stillman. Come on. Timeout. Coach Van Atta. Albright was trapped on the corner. And the Falcons keep distancing themselves from the Tigers, but they still have fight and then they've pulled it back to two, and that's been the story all game. Montevallo will stretch it out, not quite to double digits, but to about eight points, and then they storm back and give up a couple turnovers and allow Stillman in the game. Kiona Likely is having a very quiet double, almost a double-double day so far. Right, big day from Kiana Likely. 18 points jumps off at you, uh, Tabitha Robinson. Uh, huge night for her as well. Can't miss. Uh, and like one of the coaches over here was uh, yelling at the players, she has not taken a shot off the dribble yet. Yeah, it's all exactly. been catch and shoot. Uh, so the Falcons really need to make her put it on the floor. And that's something Haven Albright's very good at, but it seems like teams realize her threat and get coverage on her. So far, the Falcons have allowed Tabitha Robinson the freedom of the court. scoring game it was 851 you would imagine the team that commits the fewest turnovers would win this game it's been pretty even as far as that's concerned as well yeah. Foster Stubblefield Albright Smith and Christian will be the Falcons on the floor Pruitt likely Lowry and Robinson On the floor for Stillman. Stellafield will drop back and let the offense set up. Inside, stolen by Douglas. That's been the story of the day for the Falcons. Some sloppy passes being intercepted. Yeah, sloppy passes. And this Stillman team is not very tall, but they have a lot of 5'10", 5'11 players. So still tall enough, you don't want to force those risky passes. We've seen way too many of those. Lowry will go in and draw the foul. Two point lead for the Falcons and she will shoot two. Third foul on Rayvon Christian. So Christian and Albright now have three fouls, have to watch it. Lowry makes the first and cuts the lead to one. The second attempt. Makes that one as well. A tie game here, 8.23 left to go in the fourth in the game. Stubblefield dribbles forward. Triple team. Foster pulls up baseline. Does not get it. Douglas with the rebound. That's a must make for Tania Foster. You're in space, she sized it up, just gave it a little bit too much. Alba Perez getting set to check back in. Smith guarding Likely. Albright guarding Pruitt. Inside, tipped by Smith. And they're going to call a foul on Smith again. And Likely now has a double-double, and she's starting to become a thorn in the Falcons' side, having more of an influence as the game progresses. Has a chance to give Stillman their first lead of the half. Likely takes her free throws all the way from the left side of the stripe, makes that one. So from number 23, Alba Perez, and number 24, Ashley Dunstan. Foster will check out. Rebound Christian. He gives it to Stubblefield. See how the Falcons respond to adversity. It's the first time they've been down since the first quarter. Blocked is Albright. 
Lowry blows past Stubblefield and then likely will lay it up on the other end. 54-51. Jump ball. Likely was growing into the game. Wow, Keona Likely has dominated the game in the last couple minutes. Just turned it around for Stillman. Stubblefield inside, just over Rayvon Christian. And it's surprisingly unorganized for the Falcons on offense. I'm not sure if Coach will need a timeout in a minute or something to kind of calm the players down. Inside, Likely does not get that one to go. Perez with the rebound. Albright will go in and hit from behind. Pruitt will get call for the foul. Good hustle from Alba Perez. Again, Haven Albright trying to take on too much. Alba Perez forced the foul from the freshman Pruitt, who's had a relatively quiet game. Outside to Smith, who finds Stubblefield, who goes in, pulls up, and makes it. Montevallo has brought the lead back down to one. Lowry pushing forward. Robinson. Is around. Tipped away by Christian. Forward, Albright. Puts it up. Does not get it. And Perez will get called with the foul. That's frustrating. Albright went up with contact. It's very frustrating for Coach Van Atta. You have a great steal from Rayvon Christian. Look like you have your transition offense set and then comes to nothing in the end. And when you're trailing one point, those are the kind of possessions that you rue if you cannot finish the game off. Certainly in a low scoring contest like today, have to take advantage of those points. Baseline jumper made by Robinson. That gives her 20. 56-53, Stillman leads. Lovely shooting motion, as I mentioned earlier, from Washington. So why would you leave her that open? Kind of made a sneak play behind a teammate and was left unguarded. Stellafield gets it poked away. Montevallo ball, 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Good hustle from Armisha Washington, but she has to be careful on four fouls. Double field. Side, Christian puts it up and in. 56-55. Alba Perez used her body well to hold off defenders and it's gotten a lot more confident as the game has progressed. And there's another shot from Robinson, misses that one, Christian with the rebound. A little bit of pressure there. It wasn't even too much in her face, but had somebody there that forced an early shot from Robinson. Smith with Albright. Inside, Perez who pulls up. Air ball. Travel from Robinson. Montevallo let off the hook there. Alba Perez, I think she was caught in two minds. It was a little too far out for a shot, but there wasn't anybody in the area for a pass, and she gives it away on the inbound. Stubblefield, good, good defense by Stubblefield on the fast break, but rebounded by Likely and put in. 58-55, Montevallo trails by three. Stubblefield, down in, in between two defenders, up too strong, gets her own rebound. Goes back, puts it up and in this time. 
Great hustle from Jasmine Stubblefield, both ends of the court. Did well to cover Lowry, not foul, but it again likely had an easy rebound, but Stubblefield responds with a two of her own. Inside, Douglas. Pruitt finds Washington, back to Pruitt. Lowry drives in, loses the ball, but going to be a foul on Jasmine Stubblefield. It's going to be her second. So Lowry will go to the line. Misses that one. And the second from Lowry is in there. Robinson checks in for Lowry. In a two-point game with 3.55, you would imagine every possession matters here. The Falcons have to use more of the shot clock and intelligent passing. We've seen too many risky like that. High passes or cross-court passes. Stubblefield, drive in, get tripped. That's Washington. Illegal screen. Perez was called for it. We called an illegal screen. Washington will bring it forward. Washington. Travel. Falcons were fortunate there. It looked like Morgan Smith was beat to the basket. Inside Stubblefield. And who will step up now for the Falcons? Morgan Smith from beyond the arc, or will it be down low to Rayvon Christian? Haven Albright can also shoot a three. And makes that one, and that gives Montevallo the lead. 60-59 with 3.21 left. Big time three there from Haven Albright, clutch shot. Yeah, massive. The Falcons were trailing. You started to see frustration, and the relief on Haven Albright's face was uh, exactly the same as on her coach's face. He, was very nervous about that one going in. Haven Albright hasn't scored too much in this second period, but done well there to shoot that. Was wide open, you can't turn down a shot like that. And when you have people like Morgan Smith who can shoot the three, you normally have people covering her, so it freed up the chance for Haven Albright. Right, uh, huge play there. There's Stubblefield. Stubblefield's shown some really nice effort here in this fourth quarter and been controlling the majority of the ball handling. Yeah, we mentioned it at halftime. You can't, sometimes you aren't really to blame for turnovers, you know, you just simple mental error or credit to the other team. Stubblefield saw too many turnovers in the first half, has gotten better about that in the second, had some bad passes in the third quarter, but really she's kind of angered herself there with her own, kind of upset with her own mistakes and has picked up her hustle in game and has really not been denied when driving at the basket. Very important for her to do more of that. That's what brought them within one and allowed Albright to take the lead. One point lead for the Falcons. Back to Washington, who looks and finds Pruitt. Robinson in the corner. Pruitt drives in. Back out to Pruitt. Stowhood hits the ball. Poked away by Albright. Albright hits the floor. And they're going to call a foul on Morgan Smith. The Pruitt will go to the line. 2.57 left to go. One point lead for Montevallo. It's better though that they had Robinson covered there by Alba Perez because she was in the position that she's been sinking shots from all game. Misses the first. And that's shocking. Pruitt is an 82% free throw shooter. Lock out, Alba. Pinch, Morgan. And makes that one. Perez inbounds it to Stubblefield. Who will bring it up all alone. Looks like those students went home a little early. We have a tie game with under three minutes. Smith drives in. Floater in there, 62-60. Lovely touch by Morgan Smith, the senior leader, stepping up again in a big way.
Double team defense, timeout. Great job there by the Falcons defense to force the timeout with 19 left on the shot clock. Two minutes, 29 seconds left to go in this one. Montevallo leads by two. Crunch time now for the Falcons. They have to be creative on offense and disciplined on defense from here on out. It's been a couple players for the Falcons that have stepped up, however, to give them this lead. Jasmine Stubblefield has turned it up a notch as far as her aggression. Haven Albright hit that big three, has been more intelligent moving the ball around. That's what freed her up. And Morgan Smith, lovely floater there. Bound to Pruitt. One full timeout left for each side with two minutes and 20 seconds left to go. Outside Robinson. Morgan Smith closed out on her quickly. Pruitt will drive in. Several field on her. Likely goes in. Floats it in. Tie game again. Kiana Likely has been unstoppable in the second half and she continues. Closing in on two minutes left to play. Stubblefield will bring it up past midcourt. Stubblefield puts it in, floats it in. That's the moment where you need seniors to step up, and Jasmine Stubblefield does so. They're isolating Jasmine Stubblefield now at the top and making her drive against the player who's guarding her, whoever it is, and it seems to be working. Douglas puts up an air ball. Montevallo ball. And assistant coach Winston Hines was up off the bench furious. Not sure what Victoria Douglas was doing there. Come back, come back. Stubblefield gets the inbound pass. Will float in. Smith back out to Stubblefield. Inside to Christian. Back out. Better from the Falcons. Patient, and just as I say that, she tries to force a pass. Christian puts it up, does not get it. Oh. Foul by Alba Perez. And those are points you have to have. Rayvon Christian in the right position. You've got a second chance. Points. A minute left. That is four on Alba Perez. Coach going to leave her in there with only a minute left to play. And likely hits that free throw. And pull it within one. And that one waved off. Lane violation. I believe that was on Kiona Likely, and the Falcons catch a break there. We'll, we'll see who steps up. Is it the seniors of the Falcons, Morgan Smith and Jasmine Stubblefield, or the fantastic freshman Pruitt and Jalisha Lowry for the Tigers? Albright across to Smith. All the way across court to Albright. They swing. 17 on the shot clock. 48 on the game clock. Stubblefield inside to Perez, who puts it on the floor. Back out, stolen. Perez. And that'll be her fifth foul. So Alba Perez is fouled out of this game. In the day where Alba Perez getting the points that her game has lacked, unfortunately. It's fouled out with 39 seconds to go. Demaya Foster, a solid replacement, just a different type of player, though. Makes the first one to tie the game. 39 and a half seconds left. Get out. 
The referee's discussing something. <laughs> you hear a pin drop in here. Lock out. One shot left. Tie game. Can Kiana likely take the lead? And she does. Stillman with the lead. Inbound pass, Albright. A look. There's going to be a foul on Robinson. Falcons will inbound again. Yeah, Stillman had a foul to give. I'm not sure why Robinson fouled so early. Stubble field. Get it. 33 left. 25 on the shot clock. All right, looks, finds Foster. It drives in, baseline. Back out to Stubblefield, who goes into the lane, puts one up, off, rebounded by Stillman. Shot clock's off. So they will go to the line, 65-64, Stillman leads. And it is Kiana Likely again at the line. These are massive two free throws. This pretty much decides what kind of play you draw up if you're Coach Van Atta. She makes that one. The two-point lead for the Tigers. Likely will take the second to try to push it to three. And she does. The timeout for Coach Van Atta. 10.8 left to go in this game. No shot clock. What what do you see? Who do you go to right here? Who who do you who gets the final shot for the Falcons? Well, Haven Albright's been shooting pretty well today, but they seem to be covering her. I would try to get an open look for Morgan Smith. She's your best shooter, whether there's somebody on her or not. She has the height advantage. At this point, you can't disguise what you're doing. There's not enough time for a quick two and then a foul and to get the ball back. So I would run some kind of screen low from Rayvon Christian, try to draw people away, and then kick it out to Morgan Smith and hope for an open three, or a relatively open three. Yeah, Morgan Smith can shoot with people in her face. And 10.8 is that before. just enough time for you to stretch the defense out, kind of fake what you're going to do, but you have to kick it out, and they know that. So Morgan Smith has to be aware of when they come to her. Smith can also shoot from quite a distance away, as we've seen early in this game, shooting yeah. from well beyond the men's three-point line. Just Stillman have turned it up a notch in this fourth quarter. Mainly Kiona Likely has been aggressive on the boards. Has been having an easy time darting into the lane and getting easy layups. Ooh. Tabitha Robinson was shooting lights out. It's gone a little bit cold. You also have to be aware of the clock here. Don't want to put up a shot too early and give them time to make a shot if you convert. Yeah, yours. Exactly. When you have three-point shooters like Robinson in your team. Smith will inbound. Stubblefield. Nine left. Stubblefield looks. Finds Albright in the corner. Albright puts it up off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Washington. Fouled with 2.8 left. And that was your chance. Haven Albright they got, got a, a good, good look. look. Yeah, Haven Albright had a good look. I can't say she needed to turn that down because it was open just a little short. Perfect execution until the shot. So Smith has fouled out of the game. You got to hope that Washington misses both of these. It's unfortunate for Montevallo. They haven't been in this kind of position. She misses the first. In a while. Washington only 53%. Hey. Ashley. Ashley. Give me a quick to the Falcons Hayden. do not have a timeout left. Makes that one. Four points. Two possession game with 2.8 left. And that will do it. 68-64, the Stillman Tigers take this one from Montevallo. A great game here in Trustmark Arena. Uh, came down to the wire. Montevallo just could not hold on to a lead that they built early. Uh, Alex, what did you see? I saw that the Falcons got complacent when they had a lead. They played really frantic when Tabitha Robinson was lighting them up from three in the second quarter. You saw more pressure being put on players. It forced turnovers in the paint. They started to go away from that, and Stillman didn't shoot as well in the second half, but they did force plays down the lane. 
and the Falcons didn't really have an answer. I'm not sure if it was just slow to the ball or they were better rebounding, but the Falcons got bossed around there on the defensive side of the court, and you can't have that. If you're going to do that, you have to shoot lights out on that end of the court, and they kind of got dried up. The third quarter, we saw good shooting, kept that lead, maintained it. In the fourth quarter, they didn't shoot as well, allowed Stomach to get back in the game. And when you allowed two easy baskets, there wasn't really a comeback. Two possessions later, and Stillman were in the lead. Montevallo were playing catch up for a while, had themselves down four. Good hustle by Jasmine Stubblefield and Demaya Foster. Looked like they were going to pull the game back, but ultimately, it's beyond the arc shooting that killed them in the end. Right, uh, a big day, uh, a really good game. Montevallo didn't play poorly. Uh, you would like to uh, see them come out with uh, this one. And then you had a great look there at the end of the game to try to tie it up. Uh, you couldn't have really drawn it up any better and had it work any better. Just didn't get the shot to fall. I mean, you had your lead scorer on the game, Haven Albright, who has 15 points taking the shot, and she had a good look. 25 from Kiana Likely. Most of those coming in the fourth quarter. Only had nine going into the fourth quarter. He comes out with 25. Yeah, she pretty much took over the show. And with 11 rebounds, huge double-double from Kiana Likely. She stepped up in a big way when her team needed her. It was quiet for most of the game, as you mentioned. Only nine points. Had 16 there in the fourth quarter. She was just allowed to score too easily. Right. Uh, a huge day from uh, Alba Perez until she fouled out of the game. 14 and 10, uh, nice double-double there. Uh, showed a lot of effort, a lot of hustle, but uh, did commit too many fouls uh, at the end of the day, so she couldn't be in there on that last play. Uh, yeah, like big days from Keanu Likely and Tabitha Robinson, though. They, that's really what killed the Falcons. Uh, the Falcons only shot 40%. Stillman didn't shoot a whole lot better at 42%, but they did shoot 37 from three. Montevallo shot 27. Well, last game it was easy to see why they lost to West Florida because it was second chance points and points in the paint. Today, Montevallo had more second chance points and more points in the paint. Both teams committed a lot of turnovers, 21-22, so it didn't hurt them. Both teams shot about 40% from the field, but Montevallo shot 27% from beyond the arc compared to the 38% for Stillman, and that was and pretty much the difference. They put Stillman on the line way too much. Yeah. Uh, Stillman had 27 foul shots. Now, they didn't shoot a great percentage, only shot 63, but 17 of their points come from the charity strike when the clock is stopped, and uh, that is not what needs to happen if uh, you're Montevallo. You can't put people on the line that much, no matter what percentage they shoot. Yeah. If they're shooting 27 shots a game while the clock stopped, that's not good. Well, Kiana likely had a huge difference in the second half. Seven of her 25 came from the stripe. And for a shooter that is about a 60% shooter, that's almost a 90% day from the stripe. And if you send her to the line when she's having a fantastic run of form, she's going to capitalize on it. Falcons gave away too many free points, didn't capitalize on enough turnovers, pretty much. But neither team capitalized on turnovers. But Montevallo, Another thing, Montevallo sloppy. didn't get to the line. They yeah. only went to the line uh, Shot nine shots from the foul line. Only made seven of those. You had to convert. When you're going that few times, you got to convert those. Uh, yeah. So seven to nine, uh, which looks like a good percentage. You're shooting 77%, but that's not nearly enough times to go to the line when you're sending them to the line 27 times. Rebounds were about even as well. Montebello had 40 compared to the 39, but only other discrepancy on the stat sheet, 12 for Stillman compared to seven of Montevallo. So when the going got tough, Stillman had an answer defensively, it seemed. Just enough to keep the Falcons out. So 68 Stillman, 64 Montevallo. Montevallo drops this one. They will move to one and two on the season. Stillman moves to three and three. Uh, we'll be back Monday for uh, the Lemoyne game. Owen. Uh, Lemoyne Owen will be here Monday. So we'll be back, uh, join us then. Uh, so for tonight, I'm Austin Gates signing off for Alex Tejada. Uh, join us back on Montevallo for you.